coming up on Mountain News this morning. Yesterday, the Delphi murder case reached a conclusion in court as a jury handed out its verdict. Plus, an event in Kentucky is celebrating the hard work women have put into agriculture on and off the field. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, happy Tuesday. My name is Amelia Lee and it's 6.30 on this Tuesday, November 12th. It's also time to check in with our friend, meteorologist Megan Dusmal. And Megan, we've been talking about those cold, we've been talking about the weather we can expect. And for our friends who have not left this morning, what should they be wearing on their way out the door today? Well, you're not gonna need a raincoat. We're looking nice and dry but it is gonna be a little chilly for some places, maybe a jacket, but if I were to be dressing up, I'd put on a sweater today, especially with the high temperatures that we have going on for this Tuesday. But let's take a look at that satellite and radar. As you can see, it's gonna be nice and dry this morning. We do have some clouds that are to the east of us that's moving on through, but we'll be nice and sunny for most of the day. And as we look at the current temperatures, it's a little bit on the cool side. Again, you're not gonna need like a winter coat, but a jacket might be necessary this morning. Most of the areas in the low 40s, 39 degrees in Williamsburg and Jonesville. But as we warm up throughout the day, those highs will be getting to the upper 50s for most of the area. Some places potentially hitting that 60 degree mark, 60 for Manchester, 62 for Harlan, Jonesville and Monticello, and 64 for Jacksboro and for Middlesboro. But let's look at the temperature trend for the next couple of hours. We're starting off cool at that 45 degree mark and we will be warming up about 10 degrees. And by the time that 3 p.m. hour hits, that's when we'll see our high temperature. And I'll have your bus stop forecast in just a couple of minutes. All right, Megan, thank you. Well, the verdict has been returned in a high profile murder case out of Delphi, Indiana. Richard Allen was found guilty of murdering 13-year-old Abby Williams and 14-year-old Libby German in 2017. Prosecutors say Allen cut their throats and left their bodies near a hiking trail. Questions about Allen's mental health and a lack of DNA evidence came up during the trial. Ultimately, jurors found him guilty of two counts of murder and two counts of felony murder. Allen's sentencing hearing is scheduled for December 20th and he faces up to 130 years behind bars. New details have emerged in a Southern Kentucky murder investigation after a woman's body was discovered in a house destroyed by fire. The fire broke out Friday in the Mill Springs community of Wayne County. Mary Fulton was found dead in the home. Police arrested her son, Joseph Fulton, after he reportedly confessed to shooting his mother and setting the house on fire. According to a complaint warrant, a neighbor heard a gunshot coming from the Fulton home and saw the house on fire shortly afterward. Officials say Joseph then went to his father's house, admitted to the crimes, and asked his father to kill him to avoid going to jail. He was later arrested and charged with murder, arson, and abuse of a corpse. A Whitley County woman was charged with drug trafficking. Police arrested 44-year-old Lisa Bryant of Williamsburg in a business parking lot. Police were dispatched to the scene after a report of a woman passed out. Police found what they believe to be meth. Bryant faces multiple drug trafficking charges and one count of driving under the influence. She was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Crews responded to a home on fire in Somerset. First responders were dispatched to a home on Rainbow Terrace Drive. Crews put out the fire. They say started inside a cooking stove. No injuries were reported and the residents were able to return to their home. A new study highlights loopholes that could let kids bypass online regulations to buy e-cigarettes. Researchers looked at attempts to buy flavored nicotine vaping products from 78 websites and have them delivered to private homes. They found among 105 deliveries, delivery personnel scanned the package dry receiver's ID only one time. 78% of the products were delivered with no delivery instructions. A Kentucky superintendent responded to a social media controversy involving a middle school choir. Superintendent Patrick Richardson says the Northern Middle School Choir teacher was trying to get President-elect Trump's attention with a song called Trumpet. Richardson said, quote, the intent of the song was to get invited back to the upcoming presidential inauguration. The timing to introduce the song was not in good judgment considering that it was immediately following the election, end quote. 
Richardson went on to say they have addressed the situation. The winner of the 29th District State Senate write-in campaign is a self-described Trump Republican. WYMT asked Pineville Mayor Scott Maiden how Trump won so convincingly. I think the number one driving issue that people vote on is their pocketbook. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt our economy has is, is, is got some challenges. And, you know, if uh, the border the border thing is a crisis, I mean, I, you can slice it, dice it, whatever you want to do it. But uh, two weeks ago, my police chief came in and said, hey, we, we picked up five people, you know, last week and, or the, the, last night. And uh, we tried to take them to the jail. They couldn't take them because they didn't have identification. We called ICE. They couldn't. Uh, they wouldn't return calls, so we had to let them go. You can hear more from Scott Maiden on issues and answers, and you can find that on our website or the WYMT News app. A vote that will decide who will replace Mitch McConnell as the Republican leader in the Senate is scheduled for tomorrow. McConnell is stepping down from his leadership position. Senators John Cornyn, Rick Scott, and John Thune are running to replace him. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul has endured Rick Scott. McConnell has not said who he supports as his successor. Kentucky's governor will be in Lexington today for a tourism announcement. Andy Bashir's office says he'll unveil a new initiative to promote Kentucky. There aren't any specifics in the press release and the plan is meant to help the economy, bring in new workers and increase tourism statewide. The governor and leaders from across the state will give details at Keeneland this afternoon at 1. Dozens of women from throughout the state are gathering in Lexington this week. The Kentucky Women in Agriculture Conference brings together people from various backgrounds in the agriculture industry. Grace and Passmore talked with event organizers about how they hope to empower and educate a new generation of young women. Women have worked in Kentucky's agriculture industry for decades. You know, it's a different world since uh, my mother industry entered the industry in the in the 80s. They've gone from serving in more of a background role to running and owning their own farming operations. But it's also much more than that. We have a lot of professional women that are in agribusinesses, um, agritourism. We have people that are agricultural loan officers, um, attorneys, um, just kind of the whole game. The past and current presidents of Kentucky Women in Ag, Natalie Gupton and Jessica Wilkerson, hope the 25th anniversary celebration encourages women currently in the industry, while also inspiring a new, younger generation of women to not only follow in their footsteps, but to walk even further than those who came before. And it's just really cool to see women becoming at the forefront of farming and agriculture. Like Phyllis Smith, the owner of Greens Fork Farm, and most recently, her business, Essentially Hemp. Me being here with other ladies, I've been able to help them understand what they could possibly do. And if we didn't network like this, we wouldn't know those things. You know, we wouldn't have the, maybe the, be inspired to put that effort out there because, you know, if they see me being successful, and they think, well, why can't I too? In this room sit students and future farmers of America and women with decades of experience, all educating and empowering each other. In Lexington, Grease and Passmore, WKYT. Kentucky Agriculture Commissioner Jonathan Shell also spoke last night and he signed a proclamation declaring today, November 12th, as Kentucky Women in Agriculture Day. It's going to be a nice and clear morning, and as we go to look at those temperatures, it looks like it's going to be a cool one, too. You might need that jacket as you're heading out the door. Most of the area, we're seeing that 40 degrees, especially the low 40s this morning. Some places a little bit cooler. Williamsburg, 39 degrees this morning, so definitely a cool 39 in Jonesville as well. And as we look at those high temperatures for your Tuesday, we will be warming up but not by too much. We're looking at the upper 50s for most of the area, potentially seeing that 60 degree mark passed in some cities, especially as you're traveling more towards that Tennessee border this morning. And as you look at that bus stop forecast, 45 degrees and clear skies as you're heading to school. And by the time you're heading home, 58 in sunny skies. Amelia. All right, Megan, thank you. Well, it has been one week since the election and some officials are preparing for their new roles. I was able to sit down with one of those new officials. His name is Jake Denniston. He's a young man, barely old enough to vote. 
who now holds one of those positions at the age of 18. Before he pursues a degree in political science, Denniston decided to take a year off between high school and college, gaining real world experience by running for local government. I thought what better experience to gain in politics than running for office and trying to get out there and see how people really are instead of learning it from a textbook. He made yard signs and started going door to door, campaigning to become one of the next city councilmen for the city of Campton. When I first showed up, they were like, okay, aren't you supposed to be at school right now? And I was like, no, I'm here to work for you. I want to do this and this and this. But they were pretty surprised and pretty happy that I was running, really. Little did he know his campaign would be a huge success, becoming the vice mayor of his hometown since he had the most votes of those running. They, they thought it was time for a new, uh, what they call fresh blood and a new perspective in the city hall and in politics in general. Denniston says he is honored to get to serve his community in a new way. It's a job interview. People show up for you. If you deserve the job, you'll get it. His lifelong love of politics, mixed with a go-getter attitude and servant heart, made it easy for Denniston to run. And this love for public service started long before the November election. Jake was one of those students who was always uh, working very hard to do better for himself. He was always very outspoken, always in Frankfurt talking to uh, legislators, uh, always talking to leaders in the community, uh, always talking to leaders in the state. In a small town, Denniston is doing what he can to make big changes for the hometown he loves, with no plans to stop anytime soon. I would like to go as far as I can uh, and do as much good for people as I can, but that's up to them, that's not up to me. But I have no limit, I love politics, I'd love to make it to whatever office possible. You can read more about Denniston's story on our website, wymt.com. Well, thank you for joining us. The time is now 642. Still to come on Mountain News this morning. Planes from two U.S. airlines were struck by gunfire in Haiti as the nation battles ongoing gang violence.